Technology is a necessary staple in our modern world. Many of us can't even fathom what it would be like to live without running water, electricity, online streaming services, social media, and the internet in general. Hell, I've got second cousins who can't even imagine the sound of a dial-up modem. In fact, many of us imprisoned in our homes for the last few months have had to subsist on nothing but internet-related services. But could any of us actually survive in a medieval experience? Hi, I'm indie author and vlogger Garrett K. Jones, and this week on Forming Fantasy, I'm explaining how technology factors into the world of the Five Kingdoms. Hey, happy Saturday. There are a couple of things that I want to share with you before getting into the bulk of this week's video. First up, a week from Monday is the launch of the Creator's Corner Podcast Season 3. The theme is Storytellers. Now, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, check this out. I'll tell you a secret. Old storytellers never die. Story, as it turns out, was crucial to our evolution. We are, as a species, addicted to story. Good stories surprise us. They make us think and feel. But no story lives unless someone wants to listen. Storytelling is one of the oldest traditions and professions. Hi, I'm indie author, vlogger, and podcast host, Garrett K. Jones, and I'm doing something a little different. Instead of providing writing tips and encouragement, I'm giving other authors out there a chance to have their short stories and poems be heard. Welcome to Season 3, Storytellers. The season is all about promoting other indie authors. The process is really simple. Authors register using the link down in the description box below, and once you register, you'll receive an email with the submission form to complete the process. Once I receive the submission, I get to work recording the narration of what you submitted, whether it's a short story or poem, and once it's produced, it gets queued up in the order in which I received it. There is a $5 registration fee, but that fee serves a few purposes. First, it's your guarantee that I'll do justice to your work. Second, it helps me keep my equipment up to date. And third, it's the same as hiring any narrator to record your work. They're doing you a service to help bring your work to life. Another big announcement is that there won't be any episode next week. Seeing as how it's Independence Day, I'm going to be taking a nice holiday break and celebrating the birth of America by detonating a small portion of it. I mean, you know, lighting off fireworks. Sheesh, who do I look like? Michael Bay? Please. Before going any further with the video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications on new videos. You can select notifications for all videos, or you can select notifications based on your preferences. If you're watching on your phone, be sure to update those settings inside the app itself to get the most out of your viewing experience. So this month on Forming Fantasy, we're talking about technology. When creating the world of my series, I wanted to keep it strictly medieval. While some technology did have basic mechanisms with simple moving parts, there is nothing industrial or digital. There is no channeled electricity, no wireless communication, and no motorized transportation of any kind. I researched various types of medieval technology to be better prepared for filling in the nuanced details of the world I was creating. So I looked at transportation, I looked at communication, weapons, and construction and architecture. Using these four types of tech helped me zero in on the technological aesthetic that I wanted to create for my series. Starting with transportation, I kept the transportation as simple as possible. Characters physically trek the landscape of the Five Kingdoms and the countries beyond. Uh, they can do so on foot or on horseback. The wealthy often ride in carriages. The roads are mostly treaded earth, worn down by centuries and millennia of travel. It's only in the large cities like Herborn, Chisen, and Epon where you see streets paved with cobblestones, especially in the more affluent parts of the cities. The poorer districts 
simply have unpaved dirt streets. The city of La Sigra d'Antonati is different because the roads are all hewn from nature, and I'll talk about that more when I cover construction and architecture. Now, if you're traveling across the sea, obviously you'll be taking a ship. Most ships are driven by the wind with sections for crews to row when needed. The use of steam engines isn't a possibility, at least not yet. There are two methods of travel that are instantaneous, however. These pathways are magical. There is the slip gate, a very obvious portal between two physical locations. This is common means of transportation amongst magic users. There is another version, a dark version, called a shadow crossing. Dark mages use shadow crossings to pass through the realm of the dead to get from one place to another. The trip is dangerous, leaving the mage vulnerable to supernatural attacks mid-crossing. Communication is still fairly simple and with very few complications. Most messages are sent by courier or messenger. Magic can be used, but it's rare outside of kingdoms so steeped in the mystic arts such as Maiga. With so few practitioners outside of the former elf lands, more traditional and less magical means of communication are required. There is also no capacity for printing en masse. Most major cities have heralds that present news to the citizenry, so enough copies are actually made by hand and distributed for all the heralds to recite. Copies are also made and sent to heralds in surrounding villages and towns. Some individuals will use messenger birds like hawks or pigeons, and there are some skilled mages who will use telepathy to communicate, but they only do so with one another if it's absolutely imperative because such use of magic over long distances can create intense fatigue for the user. Architecture and construction is next. Most of the architecture was built with some use of magic. Most isn't, but as I've said in previous videos, the structures in Maiga were hewn out of nature by elf magic, while many of the buildings in Chi Sen and Pasco Dal were forged by the dwarves. The Maigans used massive boulders, gargantuan trees similar to the giant sequoias, and hillsides to create their structures. Much of the post metanias construction throughout the rest of Isink Ran and the world beyond used traditional building techniques that we would have seen in ancient and medieval times moving forward in the real world. There are some structures like the underground prison in Chi Sen, Coveno de Sperna, that use simple mechanisms in their day-to-day -day use. For example, to move through the various levels of the prison, there is a metal and wood lift. Rope and pulley systems do exist as well as ratchet systems, and given that there are no stairs or ladders in this particular prison, it uses a single lift on a winch system to move from the ground floor to the bottom floor eight levels beneath. But the architecture of the Kadasur are actually the most unique. A great example is the Sky Beacon depicted in my fourth book, Hadrian Corvus of Farfell. The Sky Beacon hovers over the southern coast of Farfell at an altitude of roughly 2,000 feet. And that's just where the base is located. The top of the tower is another 2,000 feet above that, and the structure is made of highly polished metal alloy without any seams uh, that is accessible by a series of platforms and concentrated slip gates. Access to the Silver Tower's interior is reached by riding a magically infused lift that descends from the roof cap and seals shut afterward. A similar magical enchantment is used on the central lift of the Citadel of Beleren, the solitary tower in Chi Sen's Garden District. While made of stone, it ascends and descends based on the needs of the user, and the magic is typically commanded by the Dragon Elder for which the tower was named. One of the fun features is that there is such a thing as running water. More affluent homes are able to pump water directly into their houses, while less affluent regions use a communal pump centered in their neighborhood. These were structured and designed by the dwarves when they helped rebuild parts of the Five Kingdoms. Chi Sen, for example, boasts a kingdom-wide system with natural springs that feed the reservoir. The reservoir itself was enchanted by the dwarves to remain purified at the source, and any water cycling back into it from the sewers receives purification before redistribution. Magic is a really great ex machina, isn't it? Finally, we come to the topic that everyone wants to hear about. Weapons and armor. 
Most weapons and armor are built and designed in the traditional sense, seen in ancient and medieval time periods. Now, some weapons do have magical properties, as do some sets of armor, but the vast majority of these implements of war do not contain any special designs or additional technology. Now, ships, for example, do not use any other type of propulsion other than rowing or catching the wind currents. For weapons, though, many sailing vessels do utilize scorpion launchers, mounted trebuchets, and everybody's favorite on-the-sea weapon, the cannon. While the fuel is gunpowder, it's not actually referred to as gunpowder, and cannons are typically found on pirate ships and warships. However, there are no personally sized firearms utilized in the series. One of the chief reasons why technology has stayed this medieval is because of the existence of magic and dragons. Flying fire-breathing lizards make air travel an impossibility. Mega sharks and other sea monsters make exploring beneath the waves way too perilous. And magic takes the place of most of the modern technology that we would see today. Most projectile weapons usually come in the form of bows and arrows, crossbows, slings and slingshots, and throwable spears. The point was to keep this as close to medieval fantasy as possible, as far as the type of technology seen in the books. Now, if you'd like to see some of this technology at work, I do highly recommend that you pick up a copy of my series, which is available on paperback and Kindle from Amazon. Links are in the description box down below. Hey, thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, make sure to like and share this video because that's the only way that this channel is going to be able to grow its viewership. Now, if you find yourself in a position to be able to do so, please consider becoming a channel supporter by clicking on the link down below and going to patreon.com slash gkjpublishing. On that site, you will be able to find tiers of one, three, and five dollars each support tier comes with its own sweet perks, plus you get recognition at the end of the month on the final video. If you are interested in having your short story or poem be turned into an audiobook style episode for my podcast, please click on the registration link in the description box. Don't forget to connect with me on Instagram and Twitter at GKJ underscore publishing, and I will see you guys in two weeks for the July segment of Author Awareness. The Vlog of the Five Kingdoms is filmed without the use of a live audience at Skyrocket Studios in Hanford, California. We can't do what we do without your help, so please make sure to subscribe by clicking the button that's above my head, and make sure to watch and share the videos over here to my left. Have a great week.